Hey Quaker Gap, it's Sunday morning, it's time to worship, it's Mother's Day 2020. We're still on lockdown here in Pandemia, but uh, we praise God for the opportunity to come together and worship and to honor our mothers. I'm standing out here behind our youth room. I wanted you all to have an opportunity to see the finished project. This is Jaden Weevil's Eagle Scout project. It is a fire pit that has been put together outside of our youth room, uh, including a paver patio and four beautiful benches and a brand new fire pit. And uh, this is gonna be a wonderful addition to our youth ministry. We'll give them an opportunity to come out here and just to enjoy some evenings around the fire. I, I can see them seated around, playing the guitar, singing worship songs to our Lord. Uh, I'd have that thing cranked up right now with some fire. It's a little bit cool out here this morning. And we are thankful for Jaden Weevil and the work that he has put into this. And for those who assisted him, uh, men from the church, as well as some of uh, his Boy Scout friends. And uh, it is absolutely a job well done. So let's continue with just a few announcements to make uh, this morning. First of all, we had a wonderful meal this past Wednesday night. We served 244 people. DR told me that that amounted to 62 pounds of meatloaf. And we are going to have a meal this coming Wednesday night as well. And it's uh, a privilege for us to serve our community in this way and our church family as well. So if you would call the church office by noon on uh, Monday, we would love to prepare a meal for you. I believe this week we're going to be having uh, some barbecue and uh, all the fixings. So I hope that you can sign up for that and enjoy a meal with us this Wednesday evening between 5 and 7. You can either pick it up or you can have it delivered if you would like. And so uh, we're thankful for that opportunity to serve. Uh, in addition to that, I uh, just wanted to uh, remind you that we continue to have opportunities for you to give either by dropping off your check at the church or by sending it through the mail, or you could go online at quakergap.info and you could use our giving link there as well. And we're grateful to each and every one of you that has been a, a part of keeping the donations coming in and uh, giving to the Lord and to his ministry here at Quaker Gap. I don't know what the future looks like. They're talking about uh, starting to head into phase one here uh, and then phase two of reopening. And uh, please pray for our church leadership as we um, seek the Lord's guidance as well as common sense and wisdom in how we're going to approach this thing. Uh, just uh, pay attention to your emails and to information that will come out soon uh, about what the plans are for that. Our deacons will be uh, coming together to have uh, some socially distanced meetings in order to prepare and answer some of the questions, ask some of the questions, and uh, perhaps to come up with a plan. I also here just want to take the opportunity to wish all of our mothers a happy Mother's Day, even though some of you are perhaps apart from your children this Mother's Day. Uh, take some time to talk to them on the phone, uh, to, to have a Skype meeting along with them, talk to them, and um, this is a great opportunity for us to honor the mothers in our congregation <laughs> Typically on a Sunday morning, Mother's Day, you know, we go all out. We have flowers for each and every one of you. And I know your families would take you out for uh, brunch or lunch following uh, the service. But uh, today we're not able to do that. So I hope that uh, you still feel honored and uh, that God would bless you and your children uh, during these days. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for the opportunity to gather together today, even though we are apart. We ask, Lord, for your blessings on our mothers. Pray, Father, for their health and, Lord, for uh, joy during this day. Father, that uh, you would lift them up. We, we also do pray, Lord, for uh, our time together today, that you would speak to us by your word. We want to pray for all in our congregation who are affected 
blessed by uh, these days, Lord. We pray for any who are ill and ask, Lord, for healing. We pray for those who are experiencing physical difficulties unrelated to this uh, virus, Lord, but are, are, are still struggling. We ask, Lord, for your healing for those. And we also pray, Lord, this morning for um, those who are experiencing uh, difficulty with employment and finances and pray, Lord, that uh, this time will soon be over, Lord, and we'll be able to uh, return back to our jobs and be able to make a living. We just uh, ask, Lord, for your blessings and, Lord, that you would give us wisdom as a church, as individuals, how to re-engage into life. We pray that that time would be sooner rather than later. So today, Lord, we just uh, welcome your presence. We ask, Lord, that you would speak to us. Father, that you would challenge us, Lord, that uh, you would give us a positive outlook toward what will happen in days to come, because we believe in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, Quaker Gap family. I just wanted to say happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. I also wanted to take an opportunity today to just say how very blessed and how thankful I am for the godly mother that I have. She has spent many, many years um, being an example of what it looks like uh, to be a godly mother and uh, how I can be a good mother to my children. And I just wanted to say how thankful I am for her. I love you, Mom. I think what I want to share today, one of the things I want to share about being a mom is, you know, it's a journey that requires tons of grace. And I have been so blessed because my kids have shown me a lot of grace uh, in being a mom, and they've shown me tons of unconditional love. And that has been such a special gift to me over the years. And through their example, I have been reminded that the Lord also shows us a lot of grace, and He has vast unconditional love for us, and that too is a beautiful gift. Um, the other thing that I want to share is, you know, as moms, we spend our entire lives trying to protect our children, to make life easy for them, um, and sometimes that's just not possible. We can't make everything easy for our kids. And what I've experienced is in those times, I've watched my children learn the true character of who God is. I've watched my kids discover Jesus for themselves. And that has been the most beautiful gift for me as a mom, is to see my kids learn to develop their own relationship uh, with Jesus because of the things that they're going through in their own lives. I also want to say that, you know, motherhood's not easy, and there have been a lot of women that have come alongside me, that have loved me through the journey, that have prayed over my kids with me, and have just really been godly examples to me, and I just wanted to say that I appreciate those women, and I am just so thankful that I've had them in my life. I would have to say that the best thing about being a parent for me is at the end of the day snuggling on the couch with the girls after a hard day no matter if the day was hard because of them um, not listening being wild or if it was just a hard day in general um, they don't care at the end of the day they just want to sit on the couch and snuggle and watch their favorite show or watch our favorite show or or just be together before they go to bed, which makes everybody's night even better. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I guess if I had to say the joys of motherhood are one of my main ones right now is when the boys make smart decisions and they do things to help others. I think that's when I'm, you really just have that joy. Um, and also when they're laying down the bed, even though they're big, and I get to go in and give them a little kiss or hug. And the biggest challenge is probably having tough love and um, them having to go through things and me not being able to fix it. So joys and challenges of motherhood. Happy Mother's Day. In my two and a half years of motherhood, I have definitely had a lot of challenges, but um, also experienced a lot of the joys of being a mom. Um, I think the, the greatest joy that I have is the unconditional love that they show me every day. Um, just the simple act of calling me mommy and being excited to see me when I've only been away from them for an hour or so. Um, and the challenges questioning whether I'm doing a good enough job in raising them. Um, I question myself all the time, but I think that they also teach me to forgive myself and to forgive um, easily um, because they forgive me so easily when I mess up or um, make a mistake. But being a mom has definitely um, taught me a lot about God's love for me and um, just that love that I'll never understand um, because I know that they will never understand how much I love them. On the subject of motherhood, to me, it's the most glorious, frustrating, 
exhilarating, infuriating, joyful, heart-wrenching, exciting, terrifying, invigorating, exhausting, hilarious, confounding, roller coaster of privilege and responsibility and blessing and love that I've ever been permitted to partake in. And truly the best gift of goodness that God could ever bestow on me. I sure do love my four kiddos. Being a mom to me is having Jesus invite me to sit next to him at his workbench. He's given Sean and me precious treasures to watch over and tend and nurture as they grow into all that he has prepared for them. The fact that he's given me the privilege of being a mother means that my eyes are able to see what he sees when he cups their chin in his hands and looks into their precious faces. To sing over them as he sings over them. To understand his heart for them more than any other person and to truly gain a comprehension of what he means when he says his desires are for their good. When I wipe their tears, I understand his brokenness for a world of hurt he never wanted them to feel. When I see their joy, I, my heart soars with his knowing that that gleeful moment is only a taste of their eternity with him. It's a sacred honor, but it's also a fragile responsibility. Through joy and sorrow, through their worst days, my worst days, I'm teaching them by my words, actions, and heart, whether unconditional love is really unconditional. We have a saying in our house, no matter what happens, keep coming towards us. In order for them to know that they're, um, whether in delight or del discipline of the Lord, the Father's door is always open and his lap is a safe place to sort it all out. I have to model that openness or else we're building barriers to their understanding that God redeemed them to be the one holding them through their messes. Max Lucado says, if God had a fridge, your picture would be on it. He's crazy about you. That's a mother's love. It's a reflection of God's love to a child's heart until they grow old enough to understand that if, God, if mom loves me that much, how much more does God? The greatest reward that I have received as a mom is watching my boys grow into strong men of integrity with a very strong work ethic and a strong faith in the Lord. They love our family and they respect it and they have a desire to pass on the legacy that my parents left us, the legacy of faith. They are caring and they are giving and this fills me with great joy and thankfulness. Hey everybody, just wanted to say happy Mother's Day to all you mamas out there. Um, I know for me, there is like no greater privilege or honor than it is to be a mom. And I just uh, thank God for the privilege and also the responsibility of being a mom. Um, I have been blessed beyond measure um, with my four beautiful kids that I just love and adore. and. Uh, they have just been such a joy um, to me, and um, I think the biggest thing is just seeing how their personalities, you know, from just being little babies, um, growing all the way up, you know, just to see how their personalities have developed, and just to see the God-given talents and abilities that they have, and just see how those have flourished. But I think the biggest thing would be um, just knowing that all four of them have, um, at a young age, have accepted Christ. Um, into their lives as their savior. And so, you know, what greater peace could I have as a mom for that? Um, and as far as struggles go, um, I guess, well, I don't know, where do I start with that, right? No, um, but I think when I think of the struggles, I guess it would be the biggest thing is just entrusting them to God and knowing that he always knows and does what's best for them. And it's easy to have sleepless nights or wanna take control of things. and. I just need to let go of that and let God do his thing because, you know, believe it or not, he loves them even more than I do. So, um, and I can't not take this time just to say happy Mother's Day to my mom who um, just made me who I am today. So again, happy Mother's Day.
You know, we have some wonderful mothers here at Quaker Gap, and I want to thank those who sent in videotapes and also those of you who were too bashful to send them in, but you're still great mothers, and you would have had wonderful thoughts if you had sent those in. Uh, but we praise God for you, and we praise God for all that you mean to your children and to our church body, and we miss you. You know, I can't help but feel a little bit of frustration and disappointment this Sunday uh, because I was supposed to have a guest speaker. You know, just bear with me right now. Let's let's have a little bit of a pity party. We were supposed to be at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill for Avery's graduation. And uh, my parents were supposed to drive down from New Jersey and Jerry's parents were going to drive over from Hendersonville. And we were going to meet at a restaurant in Chapel Hill and eat a wonderful meal together to celebrate mothers, to celebrate graduation. Um, but instead, I'm going to be sitting on the couch watching myself preach again. And so let's all stick out our lower lips together. Oh, you know, I feel better already. Um, I know I'm not the only one who feels frustrated right now. We could, we could probably sit around the fire pit and have a good old time sharing stories right now. And uh, it might be a healthy thing to do is to just talk about it. You know, some of our uh, high school seniors right now have missed their prom. They missed their um, senior band concerts. They've missed the opportunity to um, have their last year in their sports season and to be recognized as seniors. Uh, also, to uh, graduate soon, uh, it's just not going to be the same. They're still going to graduate. It's just not going to be the same. Uh, we've also blown past our children's uh, sports seasons in the spring, and that's disappointing for them. But let's face it, parents, it's just as disappointing for us because we enjoy watching them play just as much as they enjoy playing. And some of you have uh, huge family get-togethers usually on Mother's Day. And, um, you know, this is a time that we celebrate moms and we celebrate grads. And FaceTime and phone calls are okay, but it, it's just not the same as the real thing. Memorial Day is just a couple of weeks away, and I know that that's vacation season. But it's all very up in the air right now. There's a lot of unknowns right now. Life is still on hold, and the fact that nobody has any real answers is extremely frustrating. Please understand, it's okay to be disappointed. It's okay. It's okay to vent a little bit. It's only healthy to, to talk about your feelings it, you don't have to keep on pretending that everything is okay when it really doesn't feel okay. You know, just go outside for a few minutes and scream. You know, it's perfectly acceptable to, to just tell God how you feel and, and to reveal the, the condition of your heart to him. God, God can handle it. He, he loves to hear from his children. But then when you're done with that feeling of disappointment, let's not stay there. Uh, let's move on. Just because you're disappointed doesn't mean that you have to be defeated. We'll get past this. God will redeem this time. Joy comes in the morning. So it's Mother's Day, and our message comes from Proverbs chapter 31. And I know, I know, it's so expected. It's so derivative. It's so unoriginal. Every preacher everywhere uses Proverbs 31 on Mother's Day. So go ahead, roll your eyes. But we're not going to study the whole passage this morning. We're just going to really look at uh, verse 25 of Proverbs chapter 31. From the New International Version, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 25 says, She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. Uh, the NLT, New Living Translation, says she is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. Beautiful verse for us this morning. Very relevant to our time. But let's talk for a moment about where this proverb comes from. Right? The proverbs are classified as wisdom literature. They're written like poetry, just quick little witty principles for living. And most of the Proverbs were collected by King Solomon of Israel, the son of David. And Solomon was known for his wisdom. It was a great gift that was given to him by God. And this book is filled with knowledge that has been put to the test. It's been honed by experience. Proverbs 31 is the last chapter of the book. And it's not attributed to Solomon, but to another king, King Lemuel. 
Now, who is King Lemuel? We don't know exactly who King Lemuel is. He's not mentioned anywhere else in the Bible. We know that his name means belonging to God. Uh, and the sayings of King Lemuel, according to verse 1, are inspired utterances handed down from his mother. So if you want to be honest, Proverbs chapter 31 was written by King Lemuel's mother and then filtered through King Lemuel himself and then posted there by Solomon. Uh, starting with verse 10, it becomes apparent that Lemuel's mom was giving her son advice about women. She is advising him in the type of wife he should choose for himself. Because let's face it, most young men don't know how to choose a wife. <laughs> uh, most young men become infatuated with the first beautiful girl that pays attention to them. And so King Lemuel's mom says, look, you're a king. You have power, authority, money. There's going to be a lot of women interested in you. I want you to be careful the type of woman that you choose for your lifelong companion. So we have come to know this particular woman that's described here as the Proverbs 31 woman. And some of you have read this passage many times and you have heard many Mother's Day messages. And you know that Lemuel's mother teaches him to seek out a woman who is noble, who is strong, who's industrious, hardworking, loyal, wise, respected, admired, adored by her husband and children, and godly. And one thing Lemuel's mom is not concerned about, and never mentions, is looks. In fact, she says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. That seems to be the opposite of our culture. And our culture leads with beauty. The other things are important, but if she's not drop-dead gorgeous, what, what good are those other things? I don't know about you, but I'd rather my daughters find their significance and importance in their character first. And I'd rather my son be attracted to women of substance and not just beauty. And I think Lemuel's mom is on to something here. As I read this passage, the one phrase that stands out to me in light of all that we are experiencing right now is, she can laugh at the days to come. Right? Sometimes in the midst of our disappointment and our uncertainty right now, we just have to laugh. You know, I'm not talking about maniacal laughter or sarcastic laughter. I'm not talking about scornful laughter or evil laughter. I'm not talking about laughing like a crazy person to hide the real feelings that we have inside. We better laugh or we'll cry. We better laugh or we'll scream. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about genuine laughter that comes from confidence and hope. If you can laugh in days like these, it means that you still have hope. They say that laughter is good medicine, that it is good stress relief. You know, a few years ago, Jerry and I went to Charlotte for a comedy show starring uh, Brian Regan. Some of you have heard that comedian before. After the show was over, we were physically tired from laughing so hard. Our faces literally ached because we had laughed for two hours straight. Uh, and, and for a couple of hours, all of the stress of life was forgotten. Laughter heals. Yeah, I've been to a few funeral services where afterward there was an impromptu storytelling time and rounds of laughter. It's not disrespectful to laugh at a funeral at all. I hope when I get to heaven, my family will be able to remember me with laughter because I know laughter is good for the soul. And I know that type of laughter comes from a heart that understands that God holds the future. But isn't laughing during a pandemic disrespectful? I mean, doesn't it minimize the suffering of others to be laughing at a time like this? Well, I believe that used in proper settings, that laughter can be healing. One doctor even says it can increase immunity. Now, when we laugh, we relax our muscles, says John M. Boris. 
a staff physician at the Menninger Clinic in Houston. Our blood vessels enlarge, which helps relieve the cardiovascular system. Laughter also helps reduce negative stress hormones like cortisol, and it helps with releasing endorphins, so pain tolerance is better. Perhaps most important, laughter boosts the immune system by increasing the production of immune cells. There's a 15-year study that showed decreased mortality rates on infection-related illness when people laugh more. So maybe one of the cures for COVID-19 is laughter. Now this passage is about laughter that comes from the inside of a woman. Right? She is able to face the future with laughter. And I think we all could use some of that laughter about right now. So let's ask the question, where does that laughter come from? Well, first of all, her laughter rises from her diligence. Her laughter rises from her diligence. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 27 says, She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Now, because she has been diligent in her preparations, she doesn't worry about the future. Uh, one of my speech professors taught me a principle, less scared when prepared. You know, if you're going to get up and speak in front of a group of people, work hard at making sure you know what you are going to say. Be the expert in the subject matter that you're about to speak on. Because if you've got the subject matter down and you've rehearsed what you're going to say, you'll be okay. Your knowledge will surpass your fear. The same is true of anything in life. When we are diligent in preparation, we can rest in the knowledge that we have done everything that we can do. We can laugh because we have been diligent. Those who are lazy and unprepared have more reason to fear. So this woman's laughter is a bring it on laughter that rises from the confidence of her diligence. But secondly, her laughter rises from her character. Her laughter rises from her character. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 25 says, She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. Right? Because this woman has been through so many experiences in life and has faced so many disappointments in her life. She has developed an inner strength and a beauty that shields her from any worry about what's to come. Whatever life may bring, she knows that she has the strength to handle it. So she laughs. And her laugh is a, I've seen this before, laughter. You know, she can rest in the wisdom that is built into her character. So her laughter rises from her diligence and from her character but if we stopped there, we would miss out on one of the most important sources of laughter. Because none of us can face the disappointment and the uncertainty that comes with this life in our own strength. No matter how diligently we are prepared, no matter how strong and wise we are in our inner self, we need something from the outside ourselves in order to laugh confidently about the future. So number three, her laughter rises from her faith. Her laughter rises from her faith. The Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30 says, a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And Solomon wrote in Proverbs chapter 23, do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord there is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. This is the faith that the godly woman has. Not faith in her own abilities alone, but faith in who God is and what God promises. Christian comedian Carol Ann Miljavik wrote a book titled, She Laughs, Choosing Faith Over Fear. A great title arising from this proverb. And she writes, The woman who can throw her head back and laugh knows there's a plan for her. She knows there will be good times and bad. She doesn't fear the bad because she's rooted in the truth that even through the worst, there's so much more good. 
Those called according to God's purpose will always be shown a way to make something of their pain. So today, lay down your worry and lean on what you know. God is good. His plans for you are good. Troubles will come and go, but one thing consistently stays true. He loves you. You know, she's right. When you put your trust in a God who is good and who loves you, you can laugh at the future, no matter what it holds. So this Mother's Day is unlike any other. And I want to recommend laughter. Laughter that comes from a sense of wellness and confidence in your relationship with Jesus. Sure, we're disappointed in things right now. They're not what they should be. But disappointment doesn't have to lead to defeat. It can lead to greater dependence and maybe even a healing laugh from time to time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, that you've got this. We thank you, Lord, that you're in control, that in the midst of our disappointment and frustration at the way things are, Lord, that you smile upon us, that you still love us, and Father, that you will redeem this time, that there will be good that comes out of this for those who love you. So Lord, help us to rest in that. Help us, Lord, to maybe even laugh in that. I pray for our mothers today, Lord, that you would just fill them with uh, wisdom and the compassion and the love that they need to be leaders in their home right now. Many of the mothers are teaching their children. Many of uh, our mothers are, are trying to balance work along with that teaching responsibility and running the home as well. And so, Lord, we value all that our mothers do and pray, Lord, that you would just fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit supernaturally, that you would fill them with your comfort and your encouragement. And Lord, that dressed in dignity and honor, they could laugh at the days to come. So be with us now throughout this day as we honor our mothers, as we celebrate that time together with them. And uh, Lord, be with our college graduates as uh, this is the time of year when they are honored. And uh, Lord, things are a bit different. We just ask, Lord, that you would walk with them through this time. And uh, Lord, that you would be with us all, Father, as we endeavor to walk with you and Lord, to please you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.